G'day legends. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. So today we're actually going to chat to an absolutely incredible creator. She's taking the world by storm right now. The magic industry is loving her moves and her magic. Today we're chatting to Sonia Benito. Sonia, let's do this. Hola, mi gente. ¿Qué pasa? How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. How are you? I'm good. Oh, oh, mate, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Of course. Anytime for you, anything. Oh, you're the best. You're the best. <laughs> Um, now we, uh, we're here to talk a little bit about everything, Sonia, about what's been happening, all your history, all that kind of jazz. So can you start us off from the very beginning? Not when you were like born, let's skip ahead a few years and get into how you got into magic. Like where did that come from? Sick. So my, my little story is a little bit like, like it comes from a movie just because I'm from a small town in Spain, which is called Palencia with a P. Is it like that? Like that? Like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're <laughs> Yeah. Palencia. So I, um, I was, I say, 13 years old, more or less. And yeah, so it was not internet by then. And if it was, it was like kind of starting. I didn't speak in English as well. So it was very difficult for me to find anything related to magic. So the way I found, I found like a little shop next to, in the city next to mine. And it's called... Um, tienda de magia, so magic shop. <laughs> Same <goal. laughs> So I just I started buying like some tricks, and also my dad was very supportive with the magic. So I also, when I live in the city, and I have a, as well like a little house in the village, and in the village in Spain is usually very, it's a thing to have parties in summer. So they kind of last like three days or four days, depends how big is the the village. Mm -hmm. And so I started to buy so many tricks, very like getting very interested and I'm doing like little performances to my friends in summer because there was nothing to do. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, perfect. So they were like supporting me a lot as well. One of my friends was a DJ. So he made like a little intro for me for, for my little shows. Oh, that's so cool. Just to say, yeah, you're saying like, welcome to the... Welcome to the magic show. And my name by then was Columba, which means deaf, I think in Italian, but I don't know. Not sure. <laughs> Just in case some Italian people are like, no, that's not Columba. But, but I was like, because I, the reason why that is because I loved animals. And in the meantime, that was happening in the town, in my high, in my college. Um, one of the teachers who was retired was a magician. And he was kind of introducing me a little bit into like more like stage magic with dabs and stuff like that. He gave me one of his dabs and I buy another one. So I got two dabs for me, which I trained them. Very cute. What? Um, yeah, I was like calling them, coming to me. Um, yeah, they were super cute. So by then when he passed away and then one of the teachers told me that that I will, if I, that he wanted me to have all his tricks, like all his magic effects. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's amazing. So basically with all his effects, I started to create a whole show for like a one hour show in the, um, for my village at first, just to practice. So like in a big stage <laughs> with everyone who obviously knew me, I was doing at the same time magic and dance together. So it will be like 30 seconds, sorry, 30 minutes of, mm -hmm of magic with music and choreographed like um, a stage magic with all the dubs and then all the 30 minutes with audience. So I could just bring audience to, to the stage and stuff like that. So yes, it was, it was really cool. Um, but then on the, on the town next to, next to mine, I is when I met, when I saw on the stage, I don't know if you know Jorge Blas, he's a magician very famous in Spain, which, oh, okay. That's a lot of, yeah, he does a lot of TV shows. And by then he was, he's still very big. So mm -hmm. now he's like the, the guy who does everything on, on magic. Yep. So yeah, I got very inspired by his deaf, deaf act. So I was like, oh my God, I want to be like that. <laughs> so that's why I started with deaf magic and everything. So he was like my, my thing to look at always to be like, oh my God, he's amazing. That's awesome. By then. So yeah, that's how kind of everything started at the same time as dance, which I was dancing at the same time as well. That's insane. Because see, I've known you for quite a few years and I have to be honest, I didn't know your history. So that was, that's insane <laughs> to know that's where you started. Like, I, wow, wow. And that's because that explains a lot where you, where you said, because that was, I wanted to talk about all your dance moves because 
you have your own brand and your own style now in magic. You've moved on from your doves. I'd love to see you do dove stuff, to be honest, because I think it'd be absolutely incredible to see. Do you still do the dove stuff? I wanted to. When I was in, when I moved to London, I was like, oh, I want to keep, a, you know, I want to have doves. But it was just more difficult for like renting, just mm. moving house to house with the doves. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it was very, it seems very difficult to find doves here in London. And by then, my English wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I was struggling quite a lot to find someone who had doves. Yeah. Then when I found someone, I was like, I was like, you know what? I I just I just didn't agree much with the death magic. Yeah, yeah. So fair. I'm like, you know what? It's, it kind of re- restricted me quite a lot. Um, that's why I was like, no, I want to do more close-up magic, which mm-hmm. is more versatile, and I can do it anywhere. Yeah, well, it's because you're, you're branched off into your own style now, your own brand, if you will, because you do something that I haven't seen anyone do on socials. Like it's really really awesome for everyone who hasn't seen it go check out sonia's socials because it's dance with magic with everything is so choreographed and it's absolutely beautiful can you talk us kind of through that kind of creative process like how did you i know you kind of you doing dance before but coming into that and going into that kind of how did you get into that idea and then actually create dance moves with magic because that's insane (laughs) so how can uh, 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 so i was like because I was working professionally as a dancer, so like back dancer and music videos. And also I love to freestyle. When I was working uh, professionally as a dancer, I also started performing to the dancers. Like if I had a job or something, like when I did um, the Rihanna, uh, so I did um, Dance for Rihanna, the Brits Awards. Mm-hmm. I think it was in 2000. The last, the last performance that she did, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I did with her. <laughs> so I started performing magic with them and dancers are super loud super mm. super loud so they they were enjoying it so much and they actually they were like man you do, you do magic like they didn't know that I was doing magic it kind of came naturally for me to start incorporating magic because it's um, I think as a dancer you express, you express yourself with your body so it, it kind of came naturally for me to start incorporating just moves but it wasn't intentionally I will just be like, I, like the first, the first thing I learned was that retention, like that. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do a little wave, <laughs> and from one hand to the other. <laughs> so that's kind of is starting merging everything, and and I think when internet starting being more like it started bigger and everything, and I I started to share videos on Facebook, to to just put things together to be like. Mm-hmm. First thing that comes to mind to me is if I like a song, I imagine what I would do as a dancer with it. And then if I remember, for example, I'm like, okay, I can maybe vanish this coin in this bit. And then it will go through my body because it's actually on dance for you to, when you freestyle, you imagine things going, like if you do waving or you do popping, you imagine, you imagine something coming through your whole body, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it kind of worked the same way. So I was like, oh, what about if you use actually magic, you make it disappear and that coin is going to travel to your whole body and then appears under the hand or maybe under your mouth or whatever you want it. So it's kind of like um, there is no limits with it. That, you only your, your own creativity is your own limits. And because you have that background and it comes so natural to you, like you said, you're literally thinking of a, a dance move and all of a sudden you're like, and imagine tricking make this in that was terrible <laughs> obviously you're not going to see me like doing any of these videos but that's it's fine i can teach you <laughs> yeah, teach. yeah teach. this is what this is going to turn into now like, tutorial and how to dance yeah. but that's awesome <laughs> so you're going from having this background in uh dance and magic is where it's creating your own brand and your own style and i think that's very important for people to be doing is um finding their own brand their own style Would, yeah like yeah. the thing is yeah sorry the, the thing is that it's not one thing that you have to remember I heard this to someone and I don't remember who but it was like there is no one like you mm-hmm. so you're re- you, you're already being authentic like you're already being original so by you trying to imitate someone it's, it's fine to be inspired but inspired is one thing that copy him you mm-hmm. know the being someone so I understand everyone has their journey do you know what I mean so to find themselves and I'm not saying I found myself completely but I feel very comfortable on my skin right now so, because 
one of the things as a dancer, um, you always have to sell yourself and you are the product, which in other industries, I guess, or other art forms, maybe, I don't know, if you're a painter, yeah, you express yourself into the canvas, right? Mm-hmm. But, but that is the product. Yeah. And then I guess in magic as well, depends on what you do in magic, but as a dancer, you are the product. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of how you're looking. You need to take care of your portfolio. You have that. You have to consistently sell yourself and be authentic to you, you know, because otherwise if you're not authentic to you, you kind of, you'll be melting with it, with the rest of the people. So yeah. that's fine. You probably, whenever, whenever you get like more in the industry, yeah, you will get booked um, as long as you're good, obviously, yeah. <laughs> right? And obviously, like networking um, and all the stuff that you have to do. You're standing out from the crowd. You're not following. You're not morphing into the rest of the crowd, which is getting you out. And you're getting some really good brands. Like, sorry, I'm gonna fanboy out for a second. Like, you're you're doing some really cool stuff. Like you said, mentioned you're dancing with Rihanna, but you're also doing like you're working with a lot of awesome brands at, at the moment with yeah. your magic and what you're doing. Can you talk yeah, a little bit? So- yeah, so um, I've worked with, um, I can name it all, like Samsung Four Times, um, blah, 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 Maryland Cookies, ITV, um, Espresso, uh, what else, uh, Adidas, Nike, uh, Boxy lately, yeah. Sky TV that I've been touring this month as well, um, and Rima London, Jeez. Mac Cosmetics. Yeah, but the thing is, I... That's kind of always I wanted to do because it gives you so much creativity. And what I always think is like magic is everywhere. Mm-hmm. You do not need a deck of cards to like do magic, right? Mm-hmm. Like we all know this. And yeah. So if you're a magician, you kind of need to be able to do magic anytime, right? Like, oh, because also people are going to be like, oh, you're a magician, do a magic trick. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's ready every single time. Um, but it's the fact of putting cool magic into a brand. Mm-hmm. They is I don't know like they support obviously as well the magic industry yep. you know and I think it's awesome because my my brain kind of works every time I see an advert I'm like oh my god imagine like I just imagine my magic on an advert yeah but that's why I'm like oh how can I that's how can I how I create the video so I'm like oh what about for, I don't know for um what I do with Mac. I imagine mm-hmm. this this um, eyeshadow, I just do that and the eyeshadow actually changes and then you can give it away or something. So something like that. That how cool is that without, yeah. without doing it on the computer? Because yeah, on the on the computer, you know, you can do anything. But oh, also yeah. doing real for people and that the, mm. they see me there. So it's doing doing magic with their products, that's the that's the kind of creative part which I love. Oh yes. Like the the one that I absolutely love, and I got to be honest, I go back and watch it every now and then when I want to get inspiration. Is the Nike sock? Mm-hmm. It is Nike. Okay, <laughs> how do you? Is it in Spanish? You say Nike. I'm so, and here they say Nike. I don't know. No, um, no? Okay, cool. I'll just move on. <laughs> um, no, but because th- that one, I still go back and watch that. That that blows me away every time because it's it's that visual, like you said. It's the kind of stuff you'd want to see on adverts. And the fact that you're kind of showing you on the phone, playing with and looking at it like you're about to buy it, it's just that visual. And it's exactly what kind of, like you said, people uh, expect if you're a magician to do magic in real life, you should do it, be able to do it with everything, right? Um, mm-hmm. I've talked to a lot of magicians in the past when they're like, uh, you, you go out and you pull out a deck of cards. Everyone, everyone knows a card trick, but not everyone knows how to make a, a Nike swoosh appear on their socks you know which is which is awesome you're thinking above and beyond what everyone's doing like you said you're watching adverts and you're incorporating that in and you're creating to your own mag- uh, magic routines and even with dance so geez louise you've gone above and beyond now having <laughs> yeah. said all this are you moving into creating effects and releasing or are you just wanting to perform or where are you wanting to go with your career now so i always say that i'm a, I'm a performer and i always mm-hmm. be a performer because that's kind of what like, for example, COVID times was very difficult. Oh, yeah, yep. <laughs> very difficult, oh, as yeah. we all know. So it kind of made me wake up to be like, no, Sonia, you you doing magic because you like to perform. It's, so, for example, to do magic videos is cool, it's fun, and it, mm. it keeps me creative. But to have that every single day, 
your creativity, as you said, sometimes might die down and you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, I, so for me, it's kind of like an, um, like an extra thing mm-hmm. to include and show to the world what else it can be done apart from, as, as we said, a deck of cards, right? Yeah. Um, I have some effects um, because, again, like I had a lot of time as well <laughs> before the COVID yeah. to think, oh well, my God, what about if I do this or I do that? Um, I want to perform from now on. Mm-hmm. I'll be probably doing effects. But yes, I have some effects from that I posted on on social media mm-hmm. one of them was like the, the bigger one for me it was two years ago which is it's called Femme and mm-hmm. um, it says basi- basically like it's, you sign a card so the audience sign a card they disappears on the deck they shuffle it blah 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 it's gone and then you pay attention to the t-shirt and then you be like watch boom and then you actually can hang out the card and the, the card disappears the reason why I wanted to pull something like that is because um, in general, in the magic industry, with um, with things to do with T-shirts or we just again with branding, there is nothing that really aligns with me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what about if I can just I just create a cool T-shirt and probably as well because of copyright stuff, I was like, I'm just gonna do my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Hannah obviously took a um, um, a picture of my face. We cut it and we make it like look look like a normal t-shirt that anyone will wear that you, yeah. but magicians will know that it's related to magic because it's card to mouth yeah. because it's, it's a card in the mouth. So that's why I was like something that links to magicians, but also links to audience as well. And to bring people to my community that is not only magicians to be like, Oh yeah, this t-shirt is from, from a magician, but it's actually an effect. Obviously for, for them, it wouldn't be an effect. <laughs> it will be two different things to, to sell. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why it kind of came to me. But that was after me coming up with the Nike video mm-hmm. that I did on with them. Um, I did as well one to do the lemon. Yep. Because because I love the music. Sorry, I love the track of Rihanna mm-hmm. um, and Pharrell Williams. It's called yeah. the Lemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, oh, why no? <laughs> magic, magic, they all do magic with lemons, you know, carrying to lemon, blah, blah, blah. What about you can just pull it out of the t shirt? Um, and there's from, I think it was from the lemon as well. It became fem. So I was like, what about in a lemon t shirt? Just make it something cool. Yeah, ooh, you always can wear and you kind of ready to go. Yeah. Just, you can do it. Even though you can, uh, there's so many possibilities to do. Like, think of a card. <gasps> oh my God, that's the card you were thinking of, you know, for example. Yeah, 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 That's definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, another one of my favorite ones. <laughs> I wouldn't release it. Mm-hmm. Is the shaving? Is the shaving one? Oh, uh, that one is <laughs> so class. Like I've watched that many times, and I got to be honest, it, it stumps me still. Like I, I've I've got methods. I think I know, but geez, I love watching. I'm like, how? How? Because every time I watch it, I know it, a lot of men have been trying to do it. You yeah. know. But I mean, I do not shave my face, unfortunately. So <laughs> let, me, let me shave my legs. But I, yeah, because with the legs, well, for me, it was easier to do. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to film, very difficult, but it's all magic. There is no addition or anything like that. Hannah can tell you, Hannah, film it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so obviously, I, I mean, I don't do any editing because it was the point to be a magician if you edit stuff, you know? Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But that's why. So, what else I had? Um, it was the lemon, the shaving. The Nike. Oh, I have another one with Adidas. Mm-hmm. Um, that is like you grabbing the. I kind of slide like that. The finger it vanishes from the sock, mm-hmm. and then I put it, and then it goes on my feet. Which you're actually gonna do another video of it because I, I need to play more around with that effect because it's really cool, mm-hmm. and I can mix it with gems. Like I can choreograph it. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I. Oh, do you remember any of mine? Yeah, I'm trying to like. I'm not even thinking brands anymore. I was also thinking like the one that I've seen go viral and get shared a lot is the the coin when you push it into your neck. Like I still <laughs> see that popping up on like Instagram pages and I'm like, oh, hey, Sonia. And I'm out to like, oh, who's this page sharing it <laughs> yeah, now? Yeah, that one, that one when, yeah, because that, that's mine. I mean, when I say mine, you know, like never seen mm. it anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I have people redoing mine too. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's and, good. And inspired by it, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
It's, so, it's cute. At least they did tag me because otherwise I'd be like, mm. hey, what's no. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was very cool. Actually, I was about to do a different method with that one, mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, I, I did a kind of a mistake, and I was like, cute. <laughs> Let's go yeah, with that. Yeah, it's mainly because as, as dancing, when because I'm a freestyler, mm -hmm. you just freestyle. Yeah, and then sometimes you watch your the video, like you record yourself and you watch it, and you're like, oh, okay, I like that move, and you kind of work from that. Mm -hmm. So when I record, obviously I have the idea, but not really. So I start playing. So that's why I feel myself a thousand times until it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like a thousand freaking times. And then always the results is not the same as like when I started filming, like yeah. not at all. And I was like, let me do it again. So, cause I was like, I was like, let me do it with a sport bra. Mm -hmm. so it's not a sleeve, it's nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cause you, you gotta have people thinking of certain different methods and stuff and you're watching it back and going, okay, what would people be thinking of this method for? And then canceling that out by, like you said, putting a sports bra on or something else to like cancel that method out. And then people go, hang on, what is it now? I know, yeah, yeah. I'm always trying to challenge people in that sense. Yeah. Um, even though my videos are for, are for both, I don't know, sometimes for magicians, and but mainly I'm, I'm trying to be just like for normal people, Yeah. you know? Well, yeah, how, how many magicians do you go out and perform for in real life when you do your, your gigs, right? So, but that's the thing. Like you said, <laughs> you can do this stuff on social media, but you can also do this stuff in real life, which... I've seen you perform your stuff in real life and I've seen you, you doing your dance while you, you're performing stuff. Like you can do all this stuff in real life. It's not just for the camera, which is awesome. And which is yeah. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the boxes like for, people that want to hire you. Mm -hmm. So for the, yeah, for social media, obviously there is different things, but for me, I'm like, you, yeah, if you want someone to hire you, you need to put your work out there to see what you actually can do or you, or what's your vibe or, or if they, you know, what is, who is going to, uh, how you call it, like um, separate you from everyone else's, right? What, yeah. what is your thing? So I think it's very important. And a lot of people have talked about it, about having your own niche, yeah. you know? But I will say, if you have your niche is good, the say, the thing is you might have very little, like, yep, a few jobs, but those jobs <laughs> are big and unique for you. Well, that's what I mean. Like you you finding your niche has got you a job and those clients have come back to you again and again. If you're following into the next, I guess, whatever kind of magician does, why would they want to hire you back when Dave from down the street does the exact same thing? Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> Dave. Dave, he's always he's always doing the same thing. Love Dave, love him, but geez, copy him. Copies everything. But uh, <laughs> so that's that's where you're going. Uh, where do you see the rest of this year going? Are you still working? Are you now that everything's opening back up, are you wanting to do stage shows or are you happy doing the, the traveling? Um... So I had, I had many, so after a year when everything started to open up, I have January was very dry. <laughs> dry January, right? Dry, dry, I mean, it's yeah. always, yeah. Jeez. Like a lot of, um, <laughs> you... Shots? Should we do shots? Shots. shots. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dry January. Um, yeah, it's a, um, yeah, so I was very thankful that all of a sudden um, Sky called me to do some magic for them. Mm -hmm. And it was a, at the beginning, this was in starting at the end of February. So it, this started for four dates, it changed to three, and then all of a sudden they added 10 dates. Oh, wow. Came a tour around England. Uh, in, sorry, UK, because yeah. I was in Scotland and mm -hmm. uh, like Edinburgh, blah, blah, blah. So that was really cool. I'm like, oh my God, that freaking saved my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, after COVID, I'm like, yes. And also like I could work with them. Um, I could create a staff for them. Yep. And it was a consistent job, which I, usually my jobs is like a one goal or maybe mm -hmm. a three-day shooting or things like that. Um, yeah. And as I would say, because you say like, yeah, you work with a client and then actually they, because if you did a good job, they can hire again. That is my main thing for me. Yeah. The way that I work, yeah, I do a lot of social media, but that is not my main job. Mm -hmm. So I, I always, the reason why I get this job sometimes is just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And when you got a niche and you do a good job, they just likely will call you. 
Yeah. And I think something very important that maybe people will not to hear because I learned this in the industry of dance and they told me it's like a part of you being good and a part of you obviously have your own brand and everything I think it's very important to be a nice person to hang out with yes yeah (laughs) that's true it's just because people want to work with someone friendly fun I don't know like something easy they don't Mm -hmm. want anyone uh, who has been very difficult obviously match your standards you know what i mean like you always you just need to be professional this is the reason why you have these these terms or whatever you know and just explaining to them also magic industry is very niche not everyone understands about magic and that's one one of the things i learned in just working with brands when you explain something <laughs> you have in your mind but they don't know what you're saying they don't yeah. not until that like, you have to be very meticulous of of what you're explaining and what is the possibilities or like, yeah, like you explain it to, to someone that never seen magic before. So, yeah. so it, I think that is a very important, a very good tip, I think, because I helped me a lot. And I'm like, okay, so now you, you need to like be very specified with, with things and be very clear. Yeah. But yeah. Do you, do you find brands giving you crazy ideas? Like they're like, Hey, can you do this with our product? And you're like, can you Absolutely not. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're like, what's your budget again? I'm like, uh, two hundred quid. You're like, no. Yeah, I mean, I, you get these kind of things, mm-hmm. but then you, I think you need to separate yourself from from what they say and to take it personal. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. again, as I said, like people do not know what they are, unless they have worked with a magician before. Um, magic is all a secret, you know, they don't know the, the behind the scenes. So yeah, yeah. I just said like, can, can you fly? And I'm like, well, if you want me to do this kind of thing, this is only like, you kind of explain it to them without, yeah. without revealing anything, obviously, but it'll be yeah. like the budget that you give me. And this is kind of the things that you want to go for, obviously kind of making them feel like, like they got what they want. Mm-hmm. Or if you cannot make the standards that they want, give them other solutions. Yeah. You know? Obviously, not- yeah, kind of limit yourself though, because otherwise they're taking time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that like, by being clear to be like, be like, okay, I charge this for this amount of hours of work, of creative ideas, or this is separate from my performances. Or if you want me to cons- like, yes, consult for you, or I don't, I, I do consult, but. I with me performing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm like this is uh, it's all together. So yeah, you got to remember you working with them, you don't working against them. Yes. And also, for example, in that's where I learned in shootings. Um, the director obviously is following the the things from the client, and the client can change their mind oh, just yeah. like that. Yeah. It's just like that. I mean, we all know, right? So. So the director has to be very flexible. So if you're the talent, you're not flexible, you're being very difficult, they're just not going to hire you again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Again, know your limits, how much flexible you can be. Mm-hmm. And and see if it's worth to work with them anymore, if you enjoyed it. Like you you also have to know if you if it'll be worth it for you to work in the future with them. You yeah, know? that's true. Because sometimes, I don't know, so I have sometimes some jobs will be like very difficult at the beginning but then it was easy. And then you kind of realize you're like, oh, okay. They just didn't understand really yeah. how you work. So. Yeah. Like you yeah. said, some people don't know what is involved in magic. They think that anything is possible, which anything is possible with the right budget. But when people go, Hey, I want all this stuff. And when you kind of explain that to them and talk to them as a person and not talk down to them, then they get kind of more willing to understand and, and work with you and even hopefully, hopefully make what they want become a reality because they have more of an understanding now, which is, a great way to yeah because it's a, they all have to kind of imagine what yes. to, what yeah. is going to be yes right because uh, yeah it's this i think you learn this by experience and for me like it's it's a, always a journey um curve you say mm-hmm. it's a consistently i do a job and then i'm like ah oh, i should have put this term in here so yeah. like, okay don't worry next one that won't happen <laughs> yeah. so the next one I do everything right, and they're like, oh, they got me on this one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me do this one again. I'm like, listen, next one, they won. Yeah, again, is you learn by mistakes. You don't learn by just doing everything perfect. So, yes. yeah, as long as you're honest with them and 
again, meet your standards, value yourself. I think that is the main thing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I, that, I've learned stuff just then, so that's great. <laughs> now, oh, well, well, thanks so much, Sonia, for uh, coming and hanging out. I really do appreciate it. It's been absolutely incredible. We've covered so much today. I've had my mind blown and good to see where your thought process and where you actually come and create things from. Is there anything you kind of want to lastly tell anyone that's getting into magic or got their own personal styles they're thinking about incorporating? So say, like you said, painting before. Uh, not that you know much. I don't know if you know much about painting, but if anyone's got their own performance style, is there any way that you can kind of, having combined your two passions of magic and dance, is there any kind of something that you can kind of um, help people with their creative process and combining their two passions? And um, I think, and I always say it, just if you just try to be truthful to yourself, no matter as well, if you, if you fail, that's fine. Like that's how kind of we grow. Mm-hmm. That's because it's, it's how I grow myself. <laughs> just in failures. You know, and also it's fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, one of the things don't get to, don't get to uh, fixated on consistently be, being there. Enjoy yeah. the process. Because as well as a dancer, they always say that. So we like, stop trying to be so much in the future to be like, oh, okay, I want to be there. Like enjoy the process. Cause like life is too short. And if you're not enjoying it, what you're doing it right now, it's not, it's not really worth it to be honest. Yeah. You can kind of tell that in the content as well. When someone's trying too hard to be that way, you're like, Oh, I'm feeling tense. Cause I'm, I can tell they're not enjoying it. I want to, you they can tell people can tell if you're enjoying it in your videos as well, as much as they are watching it. So I think that's where it comes from. <laughs> But when, yeah, when I push myself to be creative, that's the worst thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and if, yeah, if, I think if you can kind of listen to anyone outside of the magic industry, that's going to help you a lot as well. Cause you need to, you need to spear in things. You need to mm-hmm. live life for you to kind of grow as an artist as well. Um, it kind of long story short, this happened to me as well uh, as a dancer. I was very stuck in training, training, training. I need to train. I need to be there. I need to be the best. And I was training five hours a day consistently, also working and then also just doing some magic. Like it was crazy. And then I kind of found myself blocked, like not growing. Mm-hmm. And people were telling me, it's like, but I can't see yourself when you're dancing. All what I see is the steps. Of course, because you kind of go into a, a robot dynamic. So yeah. it happens in every art industry. If you do the same thing with magic, you will find yourself blocked. I yeah. think you need to, when you find yourself like that, just try to go outside of that magic world. If you just take a break, if you need to, this Hannah told me, I think, um, I think Darren Brown said it on the book. There's like, you wouldn't read a biography. This might not make it. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is going to make it. Wait, 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 wait. It says, it says something like, um, you don't read biographies of successful people that that is maybe consistently successful. Mm-hmm. Like a, bi- a biography is about the journey. It's about learning. It's about experiences, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how kind of you get somewhere. You don't get somewhere by just like practicing consistently in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just live your life and have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to hit that reset button every now and then. It's good to go out to our visa, hit that reset button and come back and go, because you, you, people do get caught up in the magic and get caught up in it all and then go, I don't know what I'm doing. It's so stressful. Good to hit that reset button, get away from magic for a bit and then come back with a fresh head and get into it. Yeah, it happens to me. I mean, all what I'm saying is because it has happened to me. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And it, and it probably is happening too, you know. But I think when I will just w- get worried, I mean, not worry because if you change your mind and you want to do something else, that's okay. As long as you're happy, you know. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, when I kind of went like, okay, I don't want to dance anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I, professionally I'm like I want to push my magic more and I'm like I think I feel more myself doing this and for now I'm enjoying it and I'm like I think it's usually if you have a break and then you're not missing it yeah I, I'll be like mm, okay maybe that break was good yes and then you have to find something else you know absence but makes your heart grow fonder right huh? absence makes a heart grow fonder right mm-hmm we all need to rest. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and on that note, I'll probably let you get some rest because I've been taking up a lot of your time today. So I really appreciate you coming and hanging out, Sonia. Now, if anyone wants to check out any of Sonia's work, uh, a link will be in the description below for her Instagram. We'll put all of her platforms down there if you want to go check out all of Sonia's stuff. I know she's uh, 
heavily on Instagram. So heavily on Instagram. Is that a, that's a term that people, the kids say, right? <laughs> I'm going to go with it. Yeah. 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 Go check out Sonia's Instagram. Uh, but thank you so much for Sonia for joining us. Now I've have seen in the background an ice cream cone popping about. Is yeah, that I got a very, a very cute ice cream. Yeah. Cake. You got the best ice cream cone in town. How, how is he? He is feeling sorry for himself. Bless him. Look at, look at the ice cream. Oh, <laughs> poor we don't look at him. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And he oh. doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't like the cone. Oh, I could can imagine. See. Yeah, I wouldn't like an ice cream cone on my neck. But Paul, we think. Also, also he's dragged. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's dragged. He's fine. <laughs> I'm like, he's fine. He's just literally on a lot of medication because his his first medication was really bad on him. So mm-hmm. now he's a different one. So he's finally resting. How long until he's back in the park? Everyone came in just because of him here. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly that's that's all I came here for. To be honest, I, it's good to hear about your magic, but I, I just like I just came for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's he at? Can we? Can I see him? Meet up until the end. Let <laughs> yeah. me see the. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'll put that in the description. Jump to thirty-seven minutes to see. <laughs> how no, long, the group is gonna be like. Oh. I, I was gonna say how long until he's back in the park running about. Hmm. They said 10 days, mm-hmm. but I think it might be, I don't know. He seems himself a little bit more today. He's just yeah. a bit like the meds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the meds are wearing him down. Yeah. Him but today <laughs> he seems a bit more himself, but yeah, bless him. He's not having a good experience with that. He's, he's just like a li- um, very sensitive dog, yeah, which is fine. Yeah. I, yeah. I do have very sensitive dogs before, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> very cute. And he's being very affectionate. So as That's long as great. he's happy. Well, see, that's the thing I love about, uh, he's, he'd be very cuddly now. He wouldn't want to move when you're cuddling him. I hate a dog when you're giving him a good cuddle and they're like, okay, I'm leaving now. And you're like, excuse me, I didn't say you could go yet. But he, I know, he, but he's, he's not like that. But yeah. with this, he's very cuddly. Oh, perfect. There you go. I know, so I'm like, yeah, can you say that? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sonia, for joining us. I really appreciate it. You have a great day. Uh, thanks so much for coming and hanging Pleasure. out. Thank you. And I'll be, I'll be excited to see where this year holds for you and what you come create. I need to learn some dance moves. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, Sonia. Take care. Bye. Ciao, ciao.